Author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and I'm here at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park with Megan Chance, author of Bone River. Megan, welcome to Author. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, Megan, the last time you and I talked was on my little radio show, Author yes. to Author, and we and just at the end of the conversation, we started getting into something very interesting, which was about uh, evil, actually. Yeah. About the sort of notion of evil, which I thought was very interesting coming from a fiction writer, because, of course, evil is a very convenient narrative device, isn't it? But yes. you said what? Um, I said I didn't believe that, that there was pure evil, that I thought evil was relative, and that mostly what I had come down to after a lot of looking at it because I believe that people who do what we consider to be evil things don't necessarily or always or even most of the time do them Maybe out of ever. evil intentions I, like you know we talked about Hitler and I said you know he thought he was doing the right thing right you know and so I think what it came down to for me was that I felt true evil was a lack of mercy that um, that when you could look in, say, you know, if, if, if you think about Hitler, for example, he did not actually carry out these plans. You know, he assigned other people to do them. So the question is, if you can look in the eyes of your victim and you can torment them or you can kill them and you can feel nothing about that, then I think that's evil. I think a lack of mercy is evil. Well, and it's, I, but I think it's important for a uh, writer because you, you've got, if you want to write a convincing character, be it a, a villain or a protagonist, they've got, they've got to believe in their own story. Right. And they don't think they're a villain. Right. Nobody thinks they're a villain. Right. And that's exactly right. I mean, what you have to do in, and the role of a, of, a, of a fiction writer is to, is to create a motivate enough motivation for your character that the reader actively believes, yeah, if I were this guy, this is what I would right. do. This is what I would think, you know. And then to sort of draw them into their own, coming up with sort of their own um, uh, judgment in terms of whether something is evil or not. But but I don't think very many characters believe that they're evil, and so that's not ever going to be stated. No one's ever going to say, well, I am evil, <laughs> unless you're like Klaus on the Vampire Diaries <laughs> right. who comes right out and says, you know, I'm one evil dude, you know? I think one of the great gifts that, that fiction writers give the world, uh, especially if they're trying to write more realistic fiction, that you are allowed to see life, the, the facet of life turn and turn, so you can see the whole and understand the motivation that could lead to the act that you could never believe. Right. I think it's true. I think everybody is really good at saying, I would never do that. Right. I would never do that. Right. But, you know, if you were my grandmother, who uh, never revealed to my father who his father was, to the day she died, she took that secret to the grave with her, as many times as he asked her. And finally, at one point, she said to him, if people had lived the life I have lived, if they have experienced what I have experienced, they would understand what I have done. And if they have not, they will not. And that was all she said on it. And I think you're right. Isn't that the job of the writer? Yes, but to see, say, that's it. To, to say then, let's show it that is. life. It is sort of the job to put, people, to put a reader in another, in footsteps they would never ever walk in. You know, and hopefully sort of through that to, in, to broaden their their horizons in terms of what people are capable of and and maybe to not be so quick to judge <laughs> right. you know somebody else for the decisions they make because you do not know what's really going on in anybody's head in anybody's relationships in anybody's family no. you know and so it's impossible to really judge unless you're there so yeah I think the job of a fiction writer is to put you there is to say hey look at this live this other life now tell me what you think Jim Lynch who was in the last months issue, um, talked about how important empathy is for the, for the fiction writer. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that maybe that's the most important skill for the yeah. fiction writer because ultimately you have to be the empathetic eye upon the whole world that you're, the story that you're telling. I think that's true. I think you have to really get deeply inside the mind of your characters and your most valuable tool 
is to be able to bring that empathy in and to put yourself to become whatever the character you're writing. I mean, you know, to, to become a character who believes that, you know, Indians are subhuman, you know, that is not my mindset, you know. But I, you must believe but it. But I have some, to believe it. You have it. to believe it. I have to believe it. And, you know, and so it's not just, you know, for the reader, I mean, for the writer, it's, it's, it's a, I think, honestly, I, I was an actor through most of my high school and into college, and I think that brings a lot yeah. as well, is this ability to, to imagine a life different than your own. Well, I acted for a while after college, too, and, and I absolutely, and every writer I know who's been an actor, like Garth, if you know Garth yeah. Stein did it, too, that that skill is absolutely transferable to the writing. Yeah. I feel just I'm doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I worked in TV news for, I guess, what, six years or whatever. I was a photographer, and you know, that takes you into some pretty awful places, you know, and yet it was, for me, this, like, crucible, really, and, and this place where I draw so much stuff from even now, you know. I mean, remembering, you know, because when you're in news, you're essentially dealing with people at the worst time in their lives, right. almost always. You don't want to be on a no, news show most you of the don't, time. No, you don't. <laughs> and so you're looking at the decisions, again, the decisions that people have made based on the circumstances they find themselves in. Um, and not always are those decisions particularly admirable, at least from the point of view of an outsider. Uh, it's so valuable to see life at the extreme because invariably that's what you're writing about. Mm -hmm. You're not, I mean, almost always you're going to yes. write about life in the extreme. Yes. The moment in someone's life. Yeah, the to be big able to change. See it. Yeah. And it's true. It was very, it was extremely valuable in, in that way. And, you know, just to see, you're right, people at the most extreme moments in their life and dangerous moments, that fatal moments, you know. Um, because it's surprising, like how do people really respond when the loved one dies? Yes. Really? Yes. It can be weird, it can be, yes. it can be neutral even maybe. Yeah, and you know, you get to this point where it's like, you know what, not everybody cries. You know, not everybody, you know, you start to realize there is no normal about any reaction to anything. You know, and yeah. yet you're sort of raised to believe that it is normal, that people who don't cry at death are somehow cold or distant or, um, you know, and that's just not true. I mean, it just isn't. I mean, most, I, I would say a lot of people don't have that reaction. Yeah. You know, it's so deep in and so devastating and that they can't, they can't even get to a point of tears. I'd like you to finish this sentence for me. Okay. If writing has taught me anything, anything at all, it's taught me what? Tolerance. Tolerance. That's a first. How has it taught you tolerance? From the empathy? Yeah, I think it's, it's about what we were talking about. It's about this idea that everything is relative and, and perspective is everything. And so if you can come into your life understanding that everybody's coming from a slightly different perspective than yours and, and saying, that's okay, I can, maybe I can learn from your perspective, maybe I can see something different that I've never experienced before, yeah. then I think it gives you... Um, a tolerance, you know, and in a really important way, a tolerance not to be angry, the tolerance not to be hateful or resentful, you know, I mean, I think those are really important things in living your life um, as a happy and fulfilled human being, to not, to have the tolerance for other people, which we all have to live with, you know, it's like Sartre said, <laughs> what hell is other yeah, people, right. yeah, but if you can you can summon the tolerance to understand that everybody has their own point of view and that's okay, you know, it's not about you, then um, I just think life is a much better place. Mm -hmm.